Well, good afternoon, everyone. Michael Wilhite here, meteorologist with WilhiteWX.com. Let's dive right into this. We got a lot to talk about today and not a lot of time to record this video here uh, before church tonight. So uh, here we go. Here's future radar for tomorrow. We got some showers moving into the area. As you can see, they may move in during the overnight hours, but we're not looking at anything impressive. This is not even going to be that big of a system here. You can see it stays pretty scattered until we get later in the day. Uh, later in the day here, this is suggesting around 5 o'clock uh, Eastern in the afternoon, you got some pockets here of some snow maybe starting to mix in with that. We'll have to see here. That's a little optimistic on the high res data. Better chances, as you see, are going to come here uh, down in towards Kentucky, and that's because well, by the time you're getting uh, in here 3Z, well, this is looking at more like 10 o'clock at night uh, down here uh, for par portions of the area. So, uh, you know, you got a better chance to change it over to snow then. For most of us, it's just going to be rain. But again, uh, and even not uh, even that much, not a whole lot of rain. We're only talking probably less than a tenth of an inch total of this. Not going to be much of anything. Now, this weekend, we've got a bigger system moving in. We're going to have to watch for that right now. The models are all over the place still. It's Wednesday. We're talking about this coming in on Saturday. Sure would be nice to have a little bit better model agreement. Unfortunately, we just don't have that right now. The GFS, strangely enough, has been the one that's been the most consistent. Here's what it does. Uh, that first system has moved off. High pressure is in charge for us on Friday. Get a very nice day coming up for us on Friday. And then by the time you get into the afternoon, watch this snow system sort of up in here as it starts to push our way. That's what we're keeping our eye on. Widespread snow starts to come into the area on Saturday evening. And the GFS, uh, the run here this morning, kept the load far enough down to our south that it stays all snow for uh, Indiana. As you get further down in here into Kentucky, you've got that rain starting to mix in there as well. Uh, and then it is uh, gone by the afternoon hours here on uh, by afternoon hours here on uh, Sunday. And if you just look at the run that's coming in now, that's the run from this morning. If I get my uh, if I get my darn uh, mouse to work right here for me, uh, here you go. Here's the run uh, just coming in. It's not finished processing yet, but you can see what it's doing is we stay snow, we start snow. It doesn't actually start for us until a little bit later on on, sun, on Saturday evening. But notice how it tracks the low a little bit further north, which would expand that rain uh, kind of uh, right up into maybe the extreme southern part of Indiana might get some rain in on this action uh, too. So it's uh, there's still some discrepancies in this. Keep in mind these afternoon runs don't take any fresh balloon data. No, uh, the National Weather Service sends up balloons at uh, different sounding locations across the country, and that's what feeds the data that initializes these models, these afternoon runs. Uh, what they do is all they do is just sort of rehash the old data and tweak a few things to and, and run it again. So they're not really the most helpful runs in the world, but it does show for you that there's still some volatility in the models and we'll have to check this out. So, uh, And if you're looking at what kind of a snow we could get out of that, well, the GFS is suggesting here that we could have a reasonable snow out of this. We're not looking at mega snows, but you know, here across Indiana, we're looking at maybe two or three inches possible with this on run and a little bit higher as you possibly go down towards uh, you know, towards uh, Bowling Green, Paducah, and areas uh, further on down into here. That's certainly possible, but we'll have to see this. Uh, let me just uh, show you. Um, hold on. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let me show you the Canadian model here because we have more snow to come this week. Let me show you the Canadian model to show you that there's the system on Thursday. Uh, it, it shows that changeover. It doesn't really do much of anything for us. Just some very light accumulations for Kentucky. I'm, I'm still skeptical about that. There's your high for Friday. And watch how this comes in on Saturday and Sunday, and watch how this is much more spotty in nature. Whereas the GFS broad brushed it and was very widespread, uh, it's more spotty in nature here on the Canadian. It at least sees it, so that's a good thing. Uh, the Canadian, though, I will say this, has not been consistent at all. Yes, uh, the run prior to this, it had it all confined, confined, uh, confined entirely up towards northern Indiana, and so it's just been erratic and all over the place. So has the Euro. Everybody talks about how the King Euro is just the best. The Euro has just been really ridiculously erratic as well. And so the Canadian, honestly, and the Euro, neither one have been overly helpful with the storm. The, the GFS has been the most consistent, and that's in and of itself a little bit scary if we're honest there. But here's how the, the uh, Euro sees this. There's our first storm coming out. By the time Saturday afternoon comes, it sees maybe an initial wave of uh, snow to our north. Here it comes. There's a little bit of rain, uh, a little bit of snow coming in there. It sees the rain uh, moving up just a little bit further, uh, sort of like what the afternoon GFS is suggesting here as well. So is that right or is that not? We're going to have to see. Right now, I, I could tell you that, you know, I do think some light snow accumulations are possible. I still think 
Uh, as I said in my one of my blog updates earlier today, that an inch or two is reasonable for this out of the uh, for a good chunk of the area, but nothing is set in stone. And if the trend for rain continues, well, it could sort of literally wash away all of those precipitation chances. So we will just sort of have to see. Either way, <coughs> excuse me, we got plenty more chances to come. So as this moves out, let's go back to the GFS, and I wanted to show you the parade of clippers that we've got coming in here after this. This one moves out of the way. We get a little bit of a reprieve uh, for us here on Monday. My apologies, folks. Fighting uh, just a little bit of a dry throat here, and I don't want to get you into a coughing fit. We get into a dry phase on Monday here, and then watch what happens. You've got this next system in waiting, angling coming down here for us, and then it'll be really a parade one after another. So as Tuesday comes in, we've got what could be some more light snows around the area, and the GFS this morning actually is pretty aggressive with these snows. In fact, that's what I was going to show you by going over to here. Uh, just take a look uh, at what the GFS is suggesting here. Now, you know, this is uh, a pretty... Uh, large amount of snow. Anytime that we see these large amounts of snow pretty far out in advance, I show them to you to warn what, what could come, but take these with an extreme grain of salt because what's probably going to happen is you'll see that, uh, that trim down to much smaller totals as we get closer. That's usually what happens with these. Uh, the Canadian sees this as well, but it is not as extreme and it's, uh, it's more spotty in nature, but regardless, I, you know, the, the snow chance is certainly there. And then after that one moves out of the way, watch this next one dive down. So Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, that one comes out of the way. We dry out a little bit for Wednesday, but watch this Wednesday night into Thursday. Got another clipper moving in. This may or may not strike southern Indiana and Kentucky. It looks to angle mostly more towards the north at this point. It's something that we're going to have to watch. Any of these could hit us if the, you know, if they if they angle just right. And then you see it does start to fill in potentially with uh, some on the back side of the system down here with that. And then you get another high move in. So you get a nice day on Thursday and early Friday. And then watch this. By the time next Friday night comes along, look at this. Now you've got another clipper system coming in. And then watch this. There's another front coming in. That one stays well to our north. But you notice it does start to bring some spotty chances here. Uh, with it along the front. So as we get closer in time, that may fill in more. And then right behind it on its heels is yet another clipper system that's starting to dive through. And then another one following that just a few days later. So this takes you all the way out to February the 15th. And would you just know with me that it is a parade of clippers, one after one after one. So even if we don't get some snow here, that are the kinds of snow that you like here, uh, if you're a snow lover, uh, on Saturday, there's plenty more chances coming up. It's a very active pattern coming up, and it's going to cool down a whole lot more, too. Here's the latest forecast for the southern Indiana area. If you go to willheightwx.com, you can always be able to get this. Uh, click on the seven-day forecast. Uh, and by the way, I will say this. I'm going to be up, uh, upgrading these seven-day forecasts very soon. Right now, I've got it just for the southern Indiana area. Uh, but I am sort of changing the way I do some things, and I'm not forecasting entirely for just southern Indiana weather. I'm also going to be forecasting for Kentucky as well. So pretty soon, I'll be having an Evansville area forecast, and which basically is your southern Indiana, and then a Louisville area forecast. So that'll be coming out here uh, pretty soon. I'm also doing some ag weather. Pretty soon, I'll be doing some ag weather videos. I've also got long long range outlooks. I've already started the temperature outlooks for up to four weeks in advance. I'll have precipitation outlooks uh, for those as uh, well. So there's plenty here to check out on willheightwx.com. You certainly see that cooler pattern though that I'm talking about. We were nice and mild today. Don't get used to it because we're going into uh, a much colder pattern as we go through with time. There's your snow on Saturday and Sunday as a possibility. There's your snow on Tuesday. And of course, uh, there's going to be more snow just about every other day uh, as we go through this. It's it's going to be uh, one of those types of situations here, folks, where um, it, it's just going to be a relentless thing that doesn't seem to let up. Be sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel to get these. Uh, Will Height WX, click that subscribe button and hit that bell so that you can get notified whenever I record these videos. I will be doing plenty more of these videos over the next couple of weeks, I can guarantee, with as many snow chances as we have got uh, coming up. That's it for this update, folks. I'm meteorologist Michael Will Height, WillHeightWX.com, and Southern Indiana and Lower Ohio Valley weather. Have a great day, folks. Talk to you soon.